but this is Riding with Ree and today I have the absolute pleasure of sharing with you the third in a three part series I've done with SEIB charting one year of horse insurance and all of the questions that I wish I had known in my first year of insuring Woody. Now of course I probably can't do the video without addressing this. I've managed to fracture my wrist um, so now Woody and I are fracture twins but yeah you really couldn't make this up. I was at the gym and I slipped off the back of a BOSU ball and um, I fell backwards and landed with all of the uh, elegance of a reversing dump truck on my arm so I have to wear this for about a month but it's fine. Let's watch the video and then do a little regroup afterwards. If there's one thing we know about horses it is the lengthy process of diagnosing illness lameness and other health related issues with the vets not to mention the initial cost of diagnosing the problem before we even get into ongoing treatment options and the ongoing fees associated with that with that daunting prospect in mind many horse owners including myself choose to take out horse insurance to protect ourselves and our horses should we ever need it but with so many options intricacies and opinions about horse insurance how do you know where to start and what to do. In this series, I've partnered with SEIB insurance brokers to give you everything you need to know. Over the course of three episodes, we chart the hypothetical year of a first time horse owner like myself, taking you from buying and insuring your first horse to accidents, claims and rehabbing, and finally to insurance premiums and renewals. This is essentially everything that I wish I'd been told before I became a horse owner, and I'm really excited to be partnering with the experts to share it with you. Let's dive straight in. Episode three, insurance premiums and renewals. So Steph, we've made it to the end of our first year. We've got our horse, we've insured the horse, we've made a couple of claims, they've all been accepted. We've got to the end of the year. What happens when it comes to renewing horse insurance? How does that work? Okay, so about 21 days before your renewal date, uh, we would issue the renewal terms to you. And what we do as part of the renewal process is look at what's happened over the last 12 months. Mm. Um, for your claims, for example, they would be underwritten. It might mean that your cover is reduced in relation to exclusions, for example. Um, and then we would present your renewal to you with the amended terms and make it clear to you to sort of read through the amended terms, make sure you're happy with that. Um, so that would be offered to you 21 days before your renewal date to give you enough time to make sure that's acceptable for you. And also it might be a good opportunity to have a look at the cover you've got. Um, people might need to change the cover uh, in regards to the class of use. So you might have been doing unaffiliated show jumping for the last year. Things are going really well after your yeah. claim. <laughs> uh, and you'd then be looking to go affiliated, for example. Yeah. So it's important to make sure you've got the right cover in place for that. So as an example, say during the year I had a claim for ulcers, that claim is accepted, is it likely then that when I come to renew that ulcers will then be excluded from my policy for example? Yeah, so with ulcers, a really good example, um, you wouldn't be able to submit a further claim for those ulcers, um, however it might be a case that your ulcers um, claim started six months into your policy mm, okay. so as we touched on earlier you'd still have the rest of that 12 month claim period or until your maximum is claimed to continue claiming for that ulcer treatment but there would be an exclusion placed on the policy which would prevent you from submitting a second claim for ulcers for example. Got it. Say we've got someone who's been insured with somebody else for the past year they got a vetting a year ago and now they want to move to SEIB what would the implications of doing that be would they have to get in the vetting or would they be okay with the one they have? Yeah, it would very much depend on the cover that you'd be looking for, uh, the age of the horse, value of the horse for example, um, but it might be a case where we can look at the vetting that you had done last year. Um, in addition to that, we would ask for a copy of the horse's veterinary records, um, which doesn't cost you anything. It's a printout from the vet practice and it would show all treatments, including routine vaccinations, that the horse has had in the 12 months that you've owned it. Um, and then we would make an assessment from that. Um, but normally we, we can get enough, enough information from that and then we'll be able to present to you the terms that we can offer. Okay, great. 
edgy question for you. <laughs> and this is the one I got asked a lot on social media. And that is, why do premiums go up every year? <laughs> yeah, and it's something we get asked an awful lot as well. Um, simple uh, answer to that would be the ever-increasing cost of veterinary fees. Um, you know, the cost of the treatment is going up as diagnostics and treatments advance. That means they cost a lot more. Um, the expensive procedures and diagnostics such as MRI scans are becoming so widely available now um, but you know in order to cover the costs for those within the claims um, then the, the premiums do have to go up to cover that. Well Steph thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us on this series. If you haven't seen episodes one and two we cover buying and insuring your first horse as well as accidents, making claims and rehabbing so do watch those. If you have any equine insurance specific questions you can head to seib.co.uk where you get to speak to a lovely person like Steph who is full of knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, it's been lovely, thank you. <laughs> Now it goes without saying that I've had more experience with insurance than I would have liked in my first year of horses but I did the sums and I have spent about a thousand pounds on insurance in my first year but they have paid out about four to five times that amount during my rehab with Woody. It is such a long process you know some of these things with him have been going on for many 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 months now and I'm really grateful to have my own insurance company there to make sure that things are being able to be paid and that I'm able to give him the best and I'm able to do all of the treatments and the investigations that we need to because honestly the investigations is where most of my costs came from it's trying to figure out what was actually wrong so I am definitely like team horse insurance I hope you have enjoyed this series if you want to watch episodes one and two they're in the description or you can see them in the playlist I want to thank my partners SEIB for partnering with me on this series and it's worth noting that they are not my horse insurance company so I am coming at this partnership with a completely neutral lens um, but this has been absolutely fantastic I hope that it's answered questions that you might have had about horse insurance ones that I have had when I was um, when I was first insuring my horse so thank you so much and hopefully I'll see you soon hopefully maybe not with this but we'll see bye for now